tell me that you play a very special role in the preservation of the uh, rhino uh, population in South Africa. That is correct. I'm a pilot with uh, Project Rhino. It's an initiative by the African Conservation Trust and we're involved in aerial patrol and surveillance in uh, curbing the scourge of rhino poaching that is plaguing us in South Africa at the moment. Now when did this start? The program itself was initiated in 2011. Uh, the air wing, which is the Zululand anti-poaching wing, of, of which I'm uh, part of, was uh, started in uh, 2012 and uh, we've been operating since then. Now, how many aircraft are involved in the program? At the moment we've got four aircraft in total, two fixed wing LSAs and one, uh, sorry, two Robinson R44 helicopters. Now, what is the advantage or what are the advantages of using, say, this, and this is one of the aircraft that is used in, the, in the program. Uh, what are the advantages of this aircraft, say, over a 150 Cessna or something Absolutely. like Absolutely. Most uh, importantly for us is to be able to accomplish our, our, our goals effectively, those being as an observation platform. We've uh, got a fantastic platform here for that purpose. We can fly doors on or doors off. So we can observe, uh, we can fly low and slow very safely. This aircraft's got a fantastic safety record which is also paramount to our operation. And then also, very importantly, the acquisition and running costs of this platform. Now, what, when you're flying this airplane, is there any other special equipment that you have on board in order to accomplish what you're trying yes, to Yes sir, we are able to communicate with our ground crew, so we have ground to air communication. And uh, then we also have uh, sirens fitted to the aircraft just to raise uh, attention and get the attention of the people on the ground. Uh, we also have a telemetry unit fitted where we are able to track uh, animals that are wearing radio collars. And then from a safety aspect we also have a ballistic uh, recovery parachute as well as an emergency locator beacon and we as pilots uh, carry uh, personal locator beacons as well because we operate in very hostile environments both in terms of the terrain and also the nature of of the work now because you've got this hostile environment i don't imagine you want to be landing and taking off too many times so you must have a fair uh, uh, endurance uh, with this airplane indeed we can fly comfortably between six and seven hours on a full tank of gas so we are able to cover our ranges quite extensively and uh, we operate from a secure base on a secure location now, as far as the maintenance and that type of thing, again, how do you get around that? I mean, you're in the middle of nowhere from what I understand. We are pretty much. Fortunately, with the LSA category, we're allowed to do a lot of the maintenance ourselves. However, what we're trying to do is to run as a professional and uh, geared operation as what we can. So we make extensive use of the factory and the factory maintenance program. And it's very uh, great for us that uh, the company is South African based. We're a couple of hours away from them, so whenever we need uh, anything repaired or any running repairs done, the factory is but a phone call away. Now this airplane is also, from my understanding, a very simple aircraft to assemble or disassemble in case of repairs are needed. Correct. It's uh, modular in construction, so if we have one specific component that's uh, giving us problems, it's literally just a case of removing that one component and uh, getting it replaced. And again, with the factory being close by, we generally have a 12-hour turnaround time between uh, the snag and being back in there again. Now, how many people do you use, say, as support staff to operate this airport? Support staff, basically, you need the pilot. Uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, you can fuel it up yourself. I mean, everything is very, very straightforward. So you as the pilot are, are able to, to do everything you need to do. So, over the years that this uh, program has been in operation, how many rhinos do you feel that you've been able to save? Every single flight that we conduct has an impact uh, on, the, on the rhino poaching situation in that just the presence of the aircraft deters individuals from, from poaching. We've had reports from rangers on the ground saying that they've witnessed tracks of poachers uh, disappearing into the bush, into the undergrowth whenever they've noticed the aircraft in the area. This allows our ground crews then to catch up and, uh, and track down the poachers faster. So in a sh to, to answer your question, every single flight is making an impact and uh, it's very difficult to quantify that number. So, I mean, this has got to be a fairly, I don't mean expensive, you're not using a jet aircraft, but to sustain this for three, four or ten years, I mean, it, it's, how do you pay for it all is what I'm trying to say. At the moment we rely very heavily on donor funding, we're a non-profit organization. Uh, we've got a give and gain portal, if you go to givengain.com you will find Project Rhino KZN listed there. 
Um, we encourage people to, to visit our website as well, projectrhinokzn.org, and uh, we are appealing to the public to, to get involved with this fight. And uh, we, we view it as a war, because that's what it is. We are fighting a war. We're fighting for the survival of a species, and we want everybody to get involved.